Hi there, welcome back to the video series of C-Sharp tutorial. In this video, we are going to learn about the operators in the C-Sharp. In the last video, we have learned about the typecasting in the C-Sharp. If you haven't watched that video yet, the link is in the description, please go and check out. Before we start the video, I would like to request you to watch the video completely and follow along with me to have better understanding. So let's get started. C Sharp has the same operators as the other programming languages have. The different type of operators are unary operator, binary operator and ternary operator. So we will look into them individually but before that we should know about the operator and the operand concept. If we take any of the mathematical operation, so here I have taken A and B. So A and B are two different variables so on which we have to perform addition operation. So whatever the variables are there on which we have to perform the operation, they are called operands. And whatever the mathematical symbol which we use to perform action between or among two or more variables, those symbols are called operators. So here plus is the operator, A equals to B, here equal is the operator. So as the name clarifies, unary operators are the operators which uses a single operand. Similarly, binary operators are the operators which uses two operands. And ternary operators are the operators which uses three operands. So let's look at them individually. So in the unary operator, we have the increment operator, decrement operator, plus and minus. So in the increment, we have again categorized as pre-increment and post-increment. For the decrement, it is also categorized as pre-decrement and post-decrement. So let's look at this plus and minus first, then we will discuss about the increment and decrement operators in deep. As like other programming languages, if we declare and initialize any of the value, then it will be positive by default. If we even add plus, it will be positive. But what if I wanted a number to be negative? So in that case, we use minus. So this plus is a unary operator so you can also simply write as b equals to plus a and this plus is treated as unary operator it has the significant that if it is added before a positive number then it will be a positive number <laughs> but don't think like if we add it in front of a negative number then that will also be positive number it's not that it simply follows the rules of mathematics let's say a is negative number and if we say b equals to minus a so, so let's name it as c so what will be the value of b so a has the negative 10 and b is positive of a that means positive of negative is negative so we will get minus 10 now for this c what will be the value of c so here c value is negative of a so a has the negative 10 so negative of negative becomes positive so the c value finally will become positive 10 this plus is treated as unary plus and this minus is treated as unary minus but if the same thing if you add between two operands then this plus will be treated as binary operator and if you use the same minus between two operands then that will be treated as binary operator so if we use with a single operator so it will be a unary operator and if you are using the same with two operands then it will be a binary operator now let's look at the increment and decrement so increment simply mean we are incrementing any of the value by one decrement means we are decrementing a value by one so if we say a plus plus there shouldn't be gap between a and plus plus so a plus plus simply mean a equals to a plus one and even if we say plus plus a it also mean the same a equals to a plus one that means if we are taking a as five and then we are incrementing so it will be six in both the cases and if so if we say b minus minus then it will become b equals to b minus one and even if you write minus minus b 
then also it will become b equals to b minus 1 now coming to pre increment and post increment so we are incrementing the value first so that is called pre increment and here we are incrementing the value next that's why it's a post increment simply if you have to understand what is pre increment and post increment so you can think of like it is appended at the beginning so it is pre and uh, if it is appended at the back so it is post so same is the case of both but we have a difference of that so let's say I have a number called a whose value is 10 so now I am assigning it to B and I am saying a plus plus so now here what happens is a will be assigned to B first then the value of a will be updated so if I perform this post increment then the B result will be 10 and a result will be 11 so similarly if you take the same example of having a equals to 10 and if you are making the pre increment so what will be the value of B now so so the B value will be the updated value of a because the value of a is updated first and then it will be assigned to B so here it will be 11 and a value will also be 11 so let's have a look at it so let's say I have declared a variable a equals to 10 and I have a B variable where I'm assigning a plus plus so I am making the post increment and printing the value on the console so I'll say it's a value is something called a and same is for B so our B value will be this for this entire video series we are doing our hands-on practice with the console application so let's run our application now and if you are new to C sharp and you don't know how to create console application the video link is in the description please go and check so if we see the output we got a value is 11 and B value is 10 so we are doing the post increment here so if we check this if we do post increment we got the b value as 10 and a value is 11 now if we change the same to pre increment then let's check what will be our output so we said it's 11 and 11 for a and b so let's run and check so it's 11 and 11 so similarly is the case with the decrement operator so let's assume we have a whose value is 10 and we have b where we are assigning a minus minus and then if we print a value what will be its value if we print b value what will be its value so if we talk about decrement operator so it's post decrement that means the decrement will be done after the other operation so other operation is the assignment operator so the assignment is done first then the decrement operation will happen so the assignment will be like b will be assigned to the original value of a that is 10 and the a value will be decremented now so 10 minus 1 will be 9 so this will be our output for this for the post decrement if we consider pre decrement then it will be like minus minus a so here in this case a value will be decremented first so then the value of a will be 9 and then it is assigned to b so a value will be 9 and b value also will be 9 so let's have a look at this so if we are doing pre decrement then let's run so we got 9 and 9 so for the pre decrement it's 9 and 9 so let's check for the post decrement now I need to stop it then run again 
so we got a value as 9 and b value as 10 so these are the various unary operators increment decrement plus and minus so now coming to the binary operators we have arithmetic operator relational operator logical operator bitwise operator and assignment operator which are included in the binary operator because all these operator require two operands for the operation so if we take plus it perform the same operation like adding of two number minus is the subtraction of two number multiplication is just the product of two number and division if you are performing the operation then you will be getting the decimals which will say that there is a remainder so if we get zero in the decimal place it means there is no remainder but if i needed the remainder so i'll be using the modulo operator so these are the general mathematical operators so let's have a look at this modulo operator ones so if we have a as 10 b as 3 a mod 3 and we will just make it a mod 3 equals to this much and we'll comment this line out so let's run and check if we divide a that is 10 by 3 then we will be getting quotient as 3 and the remainder will be 1 that's what we got in the remainder so this is the remainder we get performing modulo operator between two operands so coming to relational operator these are used to check the equality between two operands so if we have to check either the two numbers are equal or not then we have to use equal to operator which is represented with double equal to and if we have to check greater than then we have to use greater than operator for less than it's less than greater equals to less equals to not equals to so if we have to check either the operator are same or one is greater than other one is less than other one is greater or equal to other or one is less equal to other or both are not equal so in that case we will be using the relational operators so for this whatever the result will be getting will be in the form of true or false so if we use the equal to operator if both the operands are equal then we will be getting true otherwise we, it will be false similarly for greater than less than greater equal to less equal to if the condition satisfies we will be getting true otherwise we will be getting false so let's have a look at it once so if we say a equal to equal to b so do you think a is equal to equal to b and here this plus is used as the concatenation operator in the string so we will be looking into deep about the strings in c sharp in the upcoming videos so for now just remember that if it's one string and other is any type of variable then that plus will act as the concatenation operator so let's check so what we expect so it's false definitely so 10 is definitely not equals to 3 so let's make it 10 so 10 and 10 are equal so it should be true yes it is so if I say 10 is greater than 10 is it true no it's not but if I say it either it is greater or equal to yeah it's not greater but it is equal to so we'll be getting true so similarly are the other cases less equals to not equals to so if I have to check the either they are equal or not so I'll be using not equal to so 10 is not equal to 10 that's false for sure and if we say 10 is not equals to 11 so that is true so oh I just missed this symbol that's fine you understood whatever we are using here according to that we are getting the result 
so coming to the logical operator so if we consider some examples like a should be true and b should be true so in that case it should be true a should be true or b should be true then in that case it should be true so there are some conditions where we will be using the logical operator so for that we need to have the basic understanding of the logical operators so if we see these are the bitwise operators but here is the same concept of the logical operator so if we consider 0 as false and 1 as true then it will give us this result for the logical operator so for the false and false the result will be false for false and true it will be false for true and false it will be false for true and true it will be true so for the logical and we will be getting true if and only if both the conditions are true so for logical or it will be false only if both the conditions are false so let's look at them so for the logical operator if both the conditions are true then only the AND operation will give us the result as true and the OR operators if both of them are false then only we will be getting the result as false otherwise we will be getting the true and for the logical not it will give the reverse of the condition so if it is true it will return you false if it is false it will return you true so let's look at them so for this time I won't be writing this and even we will be removing all these things and for now I'll be declaring both as boolean and make one as true and other as false so a and b so the result will be true is it no it will be false because the and operation will return true if and only if both the conditions are true but here we have false so the result will be false so the result is false so if we say it's or so definitely we will be getting true because one of the condition is true and if we talk about negation of a so what do you think if it is true its re result will be false and what if it is false so b is false so let's check what will be the result now it's true so this is how the logical operators work so let's dive to bitwise operator now so the bitwise operator works on the bit of a number so if we convert any number into bits so let's take a is 3 so the bit corresponding to a is 1 and 1 so you should have basic knowledge of the binary to octal, octal to binary, binary to decimal, decimal to binary and all. So in that case we will get to know what are the binary value for a equals to 3. So it will be 1 1. So if we take b, b value as 4, so it will be 1 0 0. So if we perform AND operation so we have seen if for the AND operation both the bits are 1 then only the resultant will be 1 otherwise all will be 0 for the bitwise OR the resultant will be 0 if both are 0 otherwise the resultant will be 1 so for bitwise XOR the resultant will be 1 if any one of the bit is 1 otherwise the resultant will be 0 for the bitwise complement it will be the reverse of the bit if it is 0 it will be 1 if it is 1 it will be 0 so if we say we have another number called 1 so its bit will be represented as 1 so now let's have a look at this individually so 
we can see the difference uh, here for the logical operators we are using the double ampersand for the logical and but here we are using the single ampersand for the bitwise and for the logical or it's double or for the logical or and it's a single or for bitwise or so similarly we have the bitwise exclusive or or you can also say x or bitwise complement it's bitwise left shift and bitwise right shift so let's have a look at them individually so let's take an example of a and c so a value is 1 1 and c value is 1 so we have to make the number of digit as same so if we add 0 at the ones digit then its value will become 2 so we can't add there so we have to add at the tens digit now we can perform the bitwise and so its result will be if both are 1 then the resultant will be 1 otherwise resultant will be 0 so the value corresponding to this will be 1 so let's have a look at it practically so let's say my a value is 2 and let's say my v value is 1 so now if I perform a and b so what we expect our result should be so we concluded its value should be 1 so let's run and check oh sorry uh, here it should here we calculated it for the a value as 3 and the c value is 1 so for the value of 2 and 1 the resultant is 0 and for the value of 3 and 1 the resultant will be 1 so that was my bad uh, I have given the wrong input so this is how the AND operation will work so if we talk about bitwise or bitwise x or bitwise complement so these are same but uh, let's come to this left shift and the right shift so if we talk about uh, left shift so let me clear this out first and we'll take the example of 3 so let's remove all this and now we have 3 and the corresponding binary number of 3 is 1 1 so now I have to shift we have 4 bit as assigned to a integer so if we talk about 1 and 1 it will be like 0 0 oh it's 1 and 1 so this is how the bits are occupied if we shift this number by 2 bits to the left so these two will be shifted to left and this will come out of the box and whatever the vacancy is created with the shifting will be occupied with the 0 so if we convert this number to the corresponding decimal so we will be getting 12 so how we shift the operator we shifted it to the left side so it will be a left shift 2 so let's do the same so if we are taking a as 3 and if we are shifting to the left by 2 so what will be the result so we can see it's 12 so similarly if we are shifting the same bits to the right side by one bit so if we are shifting the same to the right side by one bit so the one here will go out of the box and whatever vacancy is created will be filled with zero so now we are remaining with this digit
in our memory so the equivalent decimal for this will be 1 so let's try this if we are right shifting it by one digit so what will be our result so it is one if you wanted to learn uh, if you have to find what will be the result so as a trick we have a mathematical formula for this so anything if you are shifting to the left then it will be multiplied with 2 to the power of bit so if you are taking 2 bits then n value will be 2 and similarly if you are shifting into the right so let's let me write if you are shifting to left that is left shift then the formula will be a into 2 to the power n n is the number of digits Similarly, if you are shifting it to the right, so the formula will be a divided by 2 to the power n. So n is again the number of bits to be shifted. So let's use this formula to find for the same example we took. So a value was 3 and we wanted to shift left by 2 digits. So n value will be 2. So if we do, so for the earlier result, if you remember, we got 12. So if we find the result, so a into 2 to the power 2. 2 power 2 is 4. 4 into 3 gives us 12. So that's the correct result we got. Similarly for this, we took a value as 3 and we are dividing it with 2 to the power 1 so that's 2 so if we are dividing 3 by 2 what is the result we will be getting so 3 by 2 is 1.5 but only the quotient is taken as the result so the value will be 1 so this is the formula for the left shift and the right shift so similarly for the assignment operator, the assignment operators are simply like assigning one value to another value. So we have some complicated assignment operator that is plus equals to, minus equals to, multiplication equal to, divide equal to, modulo equal to, uh, I have to assign a number. So this is assignment. You can assign a number called this. So this is also a kind of assignment. and if you wanted to assign like a equals to a plus 1 so this is also a kind of assignment but here if both the values are same so instead of writing a two times we can simply write a plus equal to 1 so it gives the same result as a equals to a plus 1 so I wanted like a modulo n and again I wanted to store the result into a in that case you can simply perform a modulo equals to n so that means a modulo n whatever the result we will be getting will be again assigned back to the a so similarly if you wanted to perform bitwise operation so you can do a bitwise and equals to 3 so this will be equivalent as a equals to a and 3 it's a bit confusing to speak but easy to understand okay so we just missed to show the example of assignment operators so we'll show you right away so let's say uh, I have a equals to 3 and now I wanted to add 5 to it so now what will be my resultant so a value will definitely be 8 so let's check it. so let's have a look at this ternary operator so the operator which requires three operands are ternary operator so here you can see in the 
syntax we have the condition then the true statement otherwise the false statement let's say i have some variable called x now i have to assign its value according to a condition so let's say if some number n1 is greater than n2 then if it is greater then i wanted n1 otherwise i wanted n2 it means i'm just finding the greatest of the two numbers and assigning it to x so that's what it does this will show that uh, the operand whatever is before question mark will be treated as the expression and it should be in the form of boolean so you are not allowed to write this string over there if you are doing you have to make the comparison in such a way that it should return either true or false and according to that the next set of statement will be executed if the condition here is true then the first block so also known as true block will be executed if it is false then the next set of block that is the false block will be executed so that's what written here so let's have a look at it practically so let's say i have a number n1 whose value is 100 i have another number n2 whose value is 900 now i don't know which of these values are greater so simply i will say i wanted a value which is greater so i'll just compare if n1 is greater than n2 so if n1 is greater than n2 it means n1 is the bigger number that is what i wanted if it is not then definitely n2 is a bigger number that is what i wanted so if we type this so we'll be getting 900 in the result so let's run and check we got the 900 but if i make the n1 as 1000 so what will be the result we'll be getting so obviously we will be getting the greatest of the two so that is 1000 in the result so other operators are size of operator type of operator ampersand also known as address of operator dereference operator is operator and as operator so we will be learning about the address of operator and the dereference operator while we are learning about the pointers concept and we will be learning about the is and as in the upcoming videos size of give us the size of the type and the type of gives the type so if i have to check what is the size of integer so i can simply write size of int and let's run so we can see the size of int is 4 it means it occupies 4 bits of memory similarly if we say the type of so it will return as the dot net type of the corresponding type so for the int it is system dot int 32 apart from this we have the other concept called operator precedence and operator associativity the different operators has the different priority and according to the priority they will be operated first operator having higher priority will be done first then the lower priorities will be done so in the mathematics we have learned the formula for b o d m a s board mass for similarly we have the precedence here so which says the operator with higher priority will be operated first and then the operator with the lower priority so in this table if you see uh, the topmost are one with the higher priority and the bottom most are the one with the lowest priority and let's say if two or more operators with the same priority come together so in that case we have the associativity rule so if you see we have the associativity rule for each of the category if the operator of the same priority comes together then either we have to perform operation from left to right or from right to left will be defined by the associativity of that operator 
so if say we have multiple multiplication operator in the same statement then from where we should start so we can see here it will be operated from left to right so the whatever the multiplications are there uh, in the left most side will be operated first and then the resultant will be multiplied to the other and so on goes on so this is what the operator precedence and associativity are so that's it for the video guys in the next video we will learn about the conditional statements in the c -sharp. hope you like this video if you have any doubt please do let me know in the comment section and do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you